welcome to the MPO Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. There is a wrinkle in time, but I'm not going to go watch it. Mm. I wonder what happened. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Who are you people? What am I doing here? I, I don't know. Everything is crazy. So, Everything is awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anywho, if you might have noticed the calendar, April 1st was a few days ago. But that doesn't mean we can't have fun, right? No. Fun. Right. When was the last time April Fools actually did something fun? Oh, I think it was 2017 when they announced um, EX Fighter or something like that. Akira's EX Fighter, where the Street Fighter 3 EX characters were they're in their own game. That was fun announcement. Really, I mostly remember uh, Taco Bell claiming they bought the Liberty Bell and renamed <laughs> it the Taco Liberty Bell. And they renamed it the Taco Liberty Bell. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Where's my Easter dinner? Oh yeah, Easter too. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but still, um, in today's review, um, we talked about this for a while now, and we agreed that we're going to do the extended cut for Lord of the Rings. So prepare your butts and join us for this eight-hour podcast. Oh, joy, Lord of the Rings. This is good because I got breakfast, lunch, and dinner for today. Spoiler warning, it's all macaroni and cheese. I know, it's going to be fun. We're going to be talking about the Lord of the Rings. And you know what? I forgot to mention that we're also going to do The Hobbit, the extended cut too. So, yeah. Oh, well then, I better go get more mac and cheese for the entire week because that's how long it'll take. <laughs> yes. Uh, wait, what, what? I, I, I'm getting a message here that says that, no, we're not going to do that because we don't have time. Darn. So, what else can we do? Guys, guys, got any ideas? Got any ideas? Oh, joy. So, the question remains, what am I going to do with this entire macaroni and cheese? <laughs> you could always have them. Give it to me. <laughs> well, we could always do a comic. Oh yeah, we haven't done a comic book in a while. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, what about one more day? Uh, one more day, Norman. You're dead to me, Norman. I do this with regret. <laughs> oh, it hurts. Ow. Okay, I think it's back. Well, why not about My Little Pony deviations? That seems fun. All right. Well, deviation is going to be a lot shorter than Lord of the Rings. I can promise you that. Yes. Maybe just a bit more fun, silly. Yes, and it'll get me to the hospital very fast because of that gunshot wound you did with your finger bangs. You know, it's funny. I've only read one Deviations comic, and it was the Transformers. Mm. The wor- In a timeline where Optimus Prime didn't die in the movie. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Is this the 2017 Deviations, or did they do this before? They'd done this once before. I, I believe this was 2016. Uh, no, uh, for, okay, for you maybe, because uh, I'm looking at the pony one, and it says 2017 for March. No, 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 the Transformers one was 2016. Ah, all right, all right, all right. Actually, I did a, a, I typed up a little blog entry on it for, on my DeviantArt. Let me just look that up. But basically, it was, what if Optimus Prime never died in the movie? And it was basically just, you could tell the vitriol against the from the writer against the uh movie because good lord they they just, i don't even know how to describe they kill off all the new transformers oh God, have God. everyone hate they hate hot rod throughout the entire thing it's like they hate him more than when if he actually had gotten uh optimus killed oh wow that's just wow it's something to behold and basically optimus almost single-handedly wins the entire war. <laughs> so by the end, there's there's no Galvatron, there's no Decepticons, there's no Soundwave or anyone else. Yeah, and this was published around March 2016. Hmm, all right. So a Deviations with My Little Pony, well, that could go really well or really bad, depending if they go the same route as the Transformers. Yeah, and hearing what you have to say about the Transformers one, the, that guy had a lot of issues. 
believe me, as someone who was in the audience and, and bawling his eyes out as Optimus Prime died, yeah, it was not a good feeling. It was not good times. I remember watching the Transformers cartoon when I was a kid. Sorry, um, the cartoon movie when I was a kid, and totally not being invested in it. But Norman, no, no uh, you're not even invested. In it. Why no, do you okay, keep making thing. me do this? No, no, just, ah! Why do you keep shooting me? Ow! Because because you keep saying things that piss me off. I was about to add in because when they killed off Optimus Prime, I was at a loss like I didn't want to watch the show anymore I was just playing with my Optimus toy robot and whatnot and like so on ow it hurts well there is there is uh no take backs that that bullet is my gift from to you ouchie uh <clears throat> but anyhow um yes this one we're going to talk about the My Little Pony Deviations comic I think this is the first one for the Deviation series. Uh, is there any news that they're doing 2018? I know they said it was only a one shot, like right on the cover. So, who knows? Mm. Who can say? Who can say where the time goes? <laughs> uh, but still, uh, let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. So, in this story, um. Publishing as part of its month-long Deviations event, uh, it is a what-if story that takes place in an alternate universe of Equestria where Princess Celestia chose Prince Blue Blood to be her star pupil instead of Twilight Sparkle. So this is going to be interesting. So what do you think of the premise before we head in? Just for first impressions. Well, it's sort of weird because... There is a there is a just because attitude to it. Why would she choose Blue Butt? Eh, just because. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, this is a, a what if that's a, asking you not to get take it too seriously. We're right back to just repeat to yourself, it's just a show. I should really just relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh... So right off the bat, you're not meant to take it all that seriously in terms of choice. And then there's the question of uh, how much fun is it? And that, that, that I guess, we'll say for the proper review. But I'm going to say I had a lot of fun reading this. <laughs> true, true. Okay. And Seppi, what about you? I love this comic. I know it's a what-if scenario, but I enjoy seeing uh, what happens in it. And um, I... I I'm sort of on, like, a in-between, I kind of like Blue Blood, I don't like Blue Blood, it's just... But there's some moments that just made me laugh. It was great. I I can't really say much other than it made me laugh a lot, and I love it oh, for it. Then. All right, then. So, as for me, this comic was fun. This comic was a fun read. The reasoning for Princess Celestia's choice was logical, but I don't know. When I was reading the whole thing, I was hoping that uh, Katie Cook, uh, she was the writer for this one, she came back. Um, but still, I was hoping that Katie Cook redeemed him in such a way, but she explained later, so we're not going to go deep into it for now. And yeah, this comic was a bunch of fun. So yeah, funs, funs. So, anywho, let's head into the review. So, if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and we'll wait. Welcome back. We start off with Princess Celestia and Kempitsk going to the, well, school. Uh, because it seems that a student passed the exam by hatching a dragon egg. Yay! And making it grow and break the roof. And Celestia is strangely cool with this. Yes, indeed. She seems so out of character. I do wonder why. <laughs> I don't know. This is Princess Celestia we're talking about. She's She's got weird tastes, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But here's, here's where the split happens. And the what if starts. And she says that, But I wonder, maybe I should choose a student who needs a bit more help this year and that is within character like she wants to 
help a student, like a struggling student to get better, I don't mind that. But the student that she picked, oh my goodness. Even Kabit says, and a personality of a hall. And said student, well, sorry. <laughs> well, I love that his initial reaction is, oh, sweet sunspots, no. <laughs> Yep, and Celestia chose Prince Blue Blood. Prince Blue Blood, the one that we talked about before who managed to con the yaks or something like that. Well, he negotiated, but he's he, he's sort of sociopathic about it. I don't actually care, I just pretend I do. Mm -hmm. And we highly enjoy that because of him, so yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Still, yep. Yeah. Prince Blue Blood is going to be Princess Celestia protege. What could go wrong, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's nature versus nurture and whatnot. So probably under Celestia's tutelage, he'll become a better pony, right? <laughs> sure, Norman. You hold on to that dream for like two panels. <laughs> oh, God. He is Don't. a jerk. Oh, my goodness. Look at him. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Uh... Even Young Blue Blood says this is a terrible idea, and I love to see Inkwell there with Kibitz, just like what? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And Twilight Sparkle in the background got a triple plus. Yay, she's the best student. Exactly, but she'll never grow up learning the value of friendship. Oh, it's so tragic. Oh yeah, she's gonna be so another. Tragic, oh, another what now? What's his name again? Star Swirl the Bearded. No, Moon Dancer, no. Moon Dancer, yeah, but in all honesty, right? Uh, the only reason why Moon Dancer got salty because Twilight didn't went to her party, right? Mm, well, not sure, yeah. Or she just wasn't interested. She might still not have gone. Eh, yeah, probably, but at the same time, too, you know what? This is a chicken and egg scenario here, so we're gonna drop it. It's all about blue blood now. So yay! After terrible intro song and the showing of how terrible blue blood is. Well, come on. Don't, don't, you, lo don't you love the, the intro song? <laughs> I actually I, I, was singing it in my head when I, I was, first read that. I was trying, but I couldn't. Like, I used to wonder what friendship could be until I found a mirror and found it was me being lecture loved by none. I'm, I'm a work of art star of the song, but I disagree. This, oh god, no. This is so... Oh, God. It's so narcissistic that it's just comically hilarious. And, that, that, and that's Blue Blood in a nutshell in this comic. He's just so full of himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and he's so unapologetic. And you meet someone like this in real life, and it's just awful. You'd never want to meet someone like this. Oh, man. But with the distance of uh, the comic and sort of the safe knowledge this is an alternate, an Elseworld story... Mm -hmm. It's more fun. Oh, yeah. But uh, you know what? I I'm going to save my comments for later at the end. But still, um, let's carry on. Uh, after the intro song, <laughs> a terrible narcissistic one at that, we see that Prince Blue Blood is complaining about, oh, you gave, uh, look at this list. This list is so full of stuff. I hate this list. Maybe I should just call it a day and... Give myself a spa day. And you want me to go to Ponyville? What? what? That's just terrible. What kind of clothes should I wear? Khakis? <laughs> he would get along with Rarity in this regard. Oh, yes. You would say so, but oh, no. But uh, Rarity would be like, khakis? Oh! Yeah, really. Khakis are terrible. That one panel of Celestia sweating balls. <laughs> Look at her face. She's just like almost going psychotic. Well, that just shows how much Blue Blood has uh, chipped away at her spirit over the years. Yeah, it almost looks like she's going to pop a vein and transform into, what was her name again? Daybreaker. Yeah, like she's going to transform into Daybreaker. Like, good God, why? Still, after that, Celestia decides, you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Blue Blood, you're going to Ponyville now ASAP. Go, 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 go. And the Royal Guard Pegasi with the chariot flies him to Ponyville only to have a detour to go to Manhattan for fashion and shampoo. Good God. I mean, hey, he, man's he, gotta keep his hair 
silky like Fabio. Uh, I don't know. It's a crime to look so beautiful. My hair is an element of harmony. <laughs> if even uh, one but... if even one strand is out of place, the realm is thrust into chaos. Oh, oh god. But anywho, but anywho, um, they do go, and much, much later, at night, Blueblood arrives, and guess who comes to, well, quote-unquote, greet Blueblood? Applejack! Apples! Yep. Good old honest Applejack comes in, and asking, did Princess Celestia send you here? Because I saw you with the royal guards and whatnot. And answer is... No, not really. I'm just here because of stings. And why? Well, because some chaos happening? What are you talking about? Look to the left. Oh, it's Nightmare Moon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Look that Applejack has to physically point, like, take his head on either side and redirect him just to look to the right. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. Nightmare Moon is about the horror. Oh, the horror. Well, and and all the ponies running for their lives. Hi, Bon Bon. Hi, hi, Sweetie Drops. Hi, Lemon, Lemony Gems. You could, Doctor Who. Derpy, uh, Berry Punch, uh, Cold Gear at the back. So Golden, many. Golden Harvest. So I like that they knew how many background ponies we would love to see. And then, of course, we get to see the negotiating skills that made Blue Blood so so useful. Oh yeah, I mean we read episode, uh, we read Friends Forever twenty six. So he is going to do a good job. Like, what could go wrong? Well, uh, it turns out well we get to see just how good Nightmare Moon's kicking power stands. Alicorns don't often get celebrated for their Earth Pony qualities of decent kicking, <laughs> yeah. but she's she gives the old buck you to Blue Blood. Oh yep, and Applejack at this back says that's not diplomacy. <laughs> So she's going to have a conniption, which is, all right, I'll be honest. It's nice seeing our, our lead heroines so frazzled throughout this. They just go nuts a bushel over this guy. Oh, yeah. And Applejack says, what was that? You didn't do anything but be a colossal jerk. <laughs> yeah, that usually works for me. Huh. <laughs> the man it's his bubble tea. Did you not read it? <laughs> Oh, well, we did. We just ignored it. I know. Because with, we'll, with, with this guy here, we're going to ignore everything he says because, ugh. But still, um, he has a plan. He has a plan. Um, And said plan is take his dog for a bath, give him sprinkling cider, make cupcakes for him, paint a portrait of him, and pedicure his hooves. And Applejack says, all right, are we ready to go defeat this nightmare pony? And Blue Blood's answer is, oh, that... Are we still on that? What do you think of this scarf? Is it too warm for Chash? Uh, what's this? Cashmere? Cashmere? Cashmere. I mean, oh, I don't know. oh my goodness. Blue Blood is such a jerk. I, ah, I, I'll kill you. Honestly, I, I think you're reading in the wrong voice, Norman. Be like, you really oh, are. Oh, that? Are we still on that? <laughs> what do you think of this scarf? Is it too warm for Cashmere? I love Cashmere. It's fantastic material. <laughs> Sappy, you agreed with him. You agreed with him. <laughs> I don't sound like this in the show, but in the else world, I talk like Donald Trump. It's fantastic. I'm the best Donald Trump impersonator ever. Somebody give me my you? bubble tea. I don't have bubble tea. That's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> ah, <clears throat> so anywho, after Applejack says, buck you and heads off to find somebody that could really help, uh, Blue Blood comes across a very cute pony, a very cute, adorable mare. Yep, the shipping, for once, I don't ship it. Yeah! <laughs> I mean, honestly, if it, yes. if it were Blue Blood from the main timeline, eh, Princess Fluttershy has a nice ring to it. Mm, probably, but not still, no, Discord's going to kill him. But still, said pony is Fluttershy, yay! And Fluttershy here is trying to bring the animals into to safety. But it seems that before she could do anything, Blue Blood stands in between the danger and uses the animal as a shield. Inclu the what? Including his dog, Bunny. <laughs> and we get to see Fluttershy go assertive Fluttershy. <laughs> oh, this is Flutter Rage. So, I, I, so early yeah. on. It's great. I don't think Saddle Rager could have topped her for uh, anger. 
yeah, you make Fluttershy angry, and Fluttershy calls Blue Blood a monster. And after leading the animals away, uh, Blue Blood spots the mare of his dreams, and said mare is rarity. Nah. Look at her, she's almost as pretty as, well, me. I give her a nine. Very nice. <laughs> so, anywho, after explaining the plan, her rarity has this cloak thingy that repels magic, and her plan is if it wraps around Nightmare Moon, uh, it will negate her magic somehow. But Blue Blood is not into the plan and wants to use the cloak as a protective shield for himself. And yeah, Blue Blood is a jerk. And Rary says, you're awful. Awfully smart. He looks like a an inchworm. Yep. Although... Can we just picture this nightmare? Right? Curses a, a scarf or a cloak. My one weakness. Curse you, <laughs> Celestia. How did you know? <laughs> Probably. Uh, <clears throat> but still, the Pegasi are at plan here and they want to try and stop Nightmare Moon. And they're doing it by using an <laughs> air bubble to bubble up uh, Nightmare Moon. But the only problem with this tactic is that they need to cover every inch of it to make sure that she's stuck in it. And Rainbow Dashers uh, enlist the help of Blue Blood. And yay, it works. It somehow works. Miraculously, it works. And Rainbow Dash says, thanks friend for all the help. And this is one of the things that Blue Blood says. Oh, Celestia has, uh, told me to make friends. And uh, that rainbow one called me a friend. So, Blue Blood here calls Rainbow down and says that, oh, um, could you sign this documentation to say that you're my friend and whatnot because so they won't believe me. And with Rainbow Dash not being in the flying circle, Nightmare Moon got free. Yes. Easy. So, yeah. he, see, he one step forward, two steps back. Oh, I mean like 50 step backs, man. 50 Shades of Blue Blood? Oh, uh, no. Uh, sorry, sorry, Norman, you walked right into that one. <laughs> that one read that one. Ah, but anyhow, um, after what, we got Applejack, Fluttershy, Rarity. Who else did we not cover? Rainbow Dash. And the last one on the list is Pinkie Pie. Oh, Pinkie Pie has a very awesome joke here. And her joke is, hey, how do you organize... A party in space, huh? And the answer is, you plan it, get it? <laughs> and Blue Blood actually uh, critiques Pinkie Pie, which may be the most cardinal sin of all. You, you want to read the line, Silver? <laughs> that was a terrible joke. All the astronomy-based humor she could go with, and that's what she picks. Can you believe this pony? It's sad. It's very sad. <laughs> uh, and, and Pinkie Pie just cra cracks. Like, Pinkie Pie just... In rage because nobody tells Pinkie Pie that she's a party pooper. Like, oh mm, dear. No, no, you, you. Yeah. And at this point, everyone here is just like in shock. Even Nightmare Moon, because Nightmare Moon here, all that she wants is for ponies to appreciate her night. While Blue Blood here is just a jerk. And to be compared to Blue Blood, oh no, that's the most. Terrible thing ever. Oh no. And with the sudden realization that she's being compared to Blue Blood, somehow the evil smoke thingy evaporates from her. And she's sorry about all of this. And it seems that the main five forgive her and tells her that everyone makes mistakes and whatnot and blah, blah, blah. And here's the grand thing. So Nightmare Moon reforms but doesn't turn back into Luna. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's her new form, so yay. And I just love this line. I'll be your loyal friend forever if you just do something about him. Gladly. I remember. Gladly. <laughs> yes, and it seems that uh, Prince Blue Blood is on the moon. Not in the moon, on the moon. <laughs> ah, oh, you're you hitting me where it hurts, Norman. You're hitting me where it oh, hurts. But no. <laughs> I just have to point it out. So... While on the moon, it seems that the helmet... It seems that the helmet is the thing that's caused Nightmare Moon or Luna to be evil. 
it seems so. I, I'm thinking because why would the helmet be there too? Probably. Well, the helm and the moon, huh? But anywho, Prince Blue Blood finds it and is about to put it on, and he has this evil look on his face, but dumps it away because what was he thinking? That would just destroy my hair. Pfft. So yeah, yeah. So no, no helmet for Blue Blood, and at a later scene. Celestia's worried about Blue Blood and thinking about how he, is he doing? Is he doing good? And so on. Kibitz comes in saying, uh, telling the princess, you won't believe who just showed up in the throne room asking to apologize to you. And I wish I could have seen this instead of the things that we get after this. But I've been talking a lot. What do you guys have to say? Well, I mean, we, we, get, we get the later, which they switch art styles, which is a little surprising. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but before the later, before the later. Before the later. I, what, I just love seeing, you think, oh, Blue Blood's going to become the next big evil. No, no. I guess that's yeah. the thing. He's a jerk and he does terrible things, but he's so impotent in power that you know his cruelty is never going to amount to anything. Yeah, but at the same time, too, I feel like this is not Blue Blood. But we don't really know Blue Blood very well as a character outside the show. I mean, I love the Friends Forever issue that featured him, but... He may be someone different, if explored in the show proper. And here's the thing. Maybe it's my perception of Blue Blood from the Friends Forever 26 comic. Because to me, he plays the bumbling fool, but he knows what he's doing. He's competent at his job. He plays the bumbling fool as a play or to make people think that he's the bumbling fool. But in reality, he is the manipulator. Since this is an Elseworld story on AU, things could have changed because of, like I mentioned before, nature versus nurture and so on and whatnot. But that's besides the point. And talking about the later art, the tone shift in art style, there's a reason for this one. Because starting from page, I got no idea what number is this, uh, Katie Cook took the helm in art. That's why it's different. Aha, aha. So it seems that while on the moon, Blue Blood managed to create a community of stuff from having bubble tea to rodeo drive and a starbucks acupuncture just create a mall a, a bazaar i think yes and all the manual labor was done by his pet dog bunny or bunny somehow i got no idea whose idea it was to arrange said store but it spells help I think that was Bunny just uh, realizing this is the only way I'm going to get out of here. Yep, yep, yep. Save me, Princess Celestia. Save me. And uh, she does, but I don't know. Like, Blue Blood doesn't really... No, the ending? No. No. <laughs> Every... Really? Everybody else is a friendship disaster? Everybody's impressed by me? Like, all the time? Uh, and we're the comic ends. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, here, here's something interesting. There's a excerpt at the end of the book saying why Katie Cook chose this moment to deviate. And uh, one of the few things I remember reading was that it was an interesting avenue to go through. And she wanted to write a story where Blue Blood was redeemed. But somehow in the writing process, she couldn't do it and just push the jerkiness to the extreme. Extreme! Yeah. Are we back in the 90s? Yes, with G.I. Joe Extreme! <laughs> uh, but, Silver, what do you have to say, man? Like, what, what do you think of Katie Cook's decision? Really, this is a chance just to have fun. My Little Pony, it's not meant to be super dark and depressing or to, to say, think how terrible it could have been if this happened. No, this is just meant to be fun. Have a good laugh. So... I salute that she just wanted to write a silly story about a character who no one really liked. And that, you know, some people like him for being minor antagonist, but no one's like he's the my favorite character. True, true. And well, this, well, since Blue Blood is not in the show that much, uh, this gives it a good excuse for him to be around. <laughs> so it's just having fun. And I, I will applaud anyone who's willing to have fun that comes at at a cost to no one else. True, true. So, anywho, before that, let's go into final thoughts. 
So, Silver, what do you think of this comic, man, overall? Oh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Blue Blood is so unapologetically, irredeemably bad. And yet he's so impotently bad that, you know, it, it's sort of like that one in a million roulette spin where it manages to fix things, though you'd never trust it for a second try. I mean, can you imagine Bl Blue Blood versus Discord? <clears throat> Oh my goodness! I that think would Discord be would be at the wall. <laughs> you know what? No, I can't. D D Discord would just mop the floor with him, literally. I don't know. I could see him calling Discord boring, and Discord would have to like devote all his energy to proving I'm not boring. <laughs> or maybe uh, Celestia and the and the Remain Five seal them both in stone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but still, that that was interesting. That was interesting. Discord. I, I I don't know. I just I just cooked up a sequel, even though I don't think Blue Blood would l last the day. But you want to know what would have been interesting if I were a deviant comic for next time? If the season three ender Twilight didn't get wings, how would that would be? Would there be a lot less fan rage? But I don't think <laughs> I don't think you could put that in a comic. <sighs> Probably, but still. Uh, Seppi, what do you think of this comic? Oh my gosh! Zero out of ten, net net bubble tea. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> real thoughts. I enjoyed this comic. I didn't think I was going to at first because of Blue Blood. I was thinking to myself, Celestia, no, sweetie, why are you being stupid? But, you know, once you realize it's a joke comic, you're you're just in it for the ride. Like, of course, they they explained it at the beginning, like, oh, yeah, this is a joke comic. At the same time, though, you, you're, you're kind of glad it doesn't happen, but at the same time, it's actually kind of fun to see what would happen. I, I was excited for the ending, and I am personally happy with how it went, especially for the part where Nightmare Moon ironically sends blue blood to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a good comic. Yeah. All right, yeah. and as for me, this comic was a fun read. I really enjoyed how it went, and the idea of making Blue Blood the main character instead of Twilight. We can see now that I'm glad that they didn't go for that route because oh my goodness, this will be a terrible episode. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd actually like to see how the show would tackle it if they tried to. I would like to see that too. Probably, like it will be a fun watch, and yeah, the, the, looking at the main five, um, try to deal with Blue Blood's shenanigans is fun. Like uh, poor Applejack, out of all the characters, Applejack got the worst out of the brunt of things. But at the same time, that just adds to when she, uh, when she says, "I will be your loyal friend forever." If you just get rid of him. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I think that's a play on... <laughs> I think that's a play on season one when everybody's confused about Applejack's um, elements. Remember way back when when people thought Applejack's element was loyalty? Mm-hmm. It seems like a play there. So, <laughs> Although I love seeing Fluttershy enraged that Blue Blood just... What are you doing? That, that shock value when he uses the animals as shields. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see that again. That's got to be killer. That's one of the funniest moments for me. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, even when he used Bunny, like Fluttershy there, it's like, oh my god, that's what the hey. What? Uh, with, with that, the comic ends, I guess. Yes. Comic ends. So, Silver. <laughs> no, uh, no to be continued, no next time on My Little Pony, because this is Elseworld. Yep, it's a one shot, unless there's another deviation out there. So, for next review... We got no idea because the schedule stops the turby, and I'm so confused on what we're going to do. But we'll do something, even if it's just us making jokes about Sapphire's bizarre shipping habits. Oh, yeah, yeah. Torex and what now again? Kill Forex. your slime. <laughs> oh. There you go, Thorax and Rarity. Ree. Ree. That'd be something. Yay, much fun. Yes, much fun in the future to be had. But anywho, what we're going to review in the future, we got no idea. But all I know is that we're going to have fun and so are you. 
So, anywho, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You have been really awesome. So, Seppi, you wanted to give out your Patreon thingy? Well, I do coffee. Send me three ah. bucks and make me happy and not tired all the time. Also, I started uh, streaming live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys want to join me, Julio. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, hey, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Cecil Raquel. And I am Asafi. And we'll guys see you next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. And since I shot Norman twice, time for the mercy kill. Oh, I have a wound there. So, Silver, want to get some bubble tea? You know, I actually had to look up what bubble tea was. I always know it as boba tea.